This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. So in this video, we're going to derive the sum rule for derivatives. So uh, let's take a look at a function. Let's say we have the function h of x, and it's comprised of two other functions. In other words, I'm going to add, if I add two functions, I could get this conglomerate function, which I'm going to call h of x. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this formula, and you can see over here in the top right corner, I've got the um, uh, formula here for the derivative, or definition, maybe I should say, of derivative. I'm going to apply it to h of x. Okay, well, how do I do this? Well, to find the uh, derivative of h of x, it says I have to replace all the x's with x plus h. So in both of these functions, I'm going to replace, oh yeah, of course I'm gonna take the limit as h approaches zero. So, but I have to replace um, the x's with x plus h. Basically it's a composition. So wherever there's an x in this function h, I have to replace all of the x's with x plus h. Then it says that I have to subtract the original function. Well, here's the original function, f of x plus g of x. And of course, I have to subtract the whole function. So that's why I'm putting parentheses around it. It's a common error that people leave off those parentheses. Okay, and of course, I've got h in the denominator. All right, so let's start playing around with this uh, algebraically. So if I do this, play around with this uh, algebraically, I'm going to start shuffling around some terms, uh, you know, just to kind of get a feel for what's happening. So um, really, what's happening if I take the opposite of all this, there's a minus f of x here, and there's a minus g of x. Okay, quite easy to see when you kind of split this up. So really, what do I have here? I have f of x plus h minus f of x. I also have the this term, g of x plus h, and I'm subtracting g of x. And all of this has h in the denominator. All right, good so far, right? Well, playing around with this a little bit more algebraically, I've got the limit as h is still approaching zero. Well, really, I have two things. I have f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and I've got this, g of x plus h minus g of x over h. I'm separating this fraction into two smaller fractions. And you could do that, right? If I, working backwards, if I were to add these two fractions, which I can because I've got a common denominator, I would just combine the numerators and I'd be right back where I started. Okay, so I'm just working in reverse, which a lot of people don't do. But remember that I'm taking the limit of this fraction as h approaches zero and I'm taking the limit of this as it approaches zero. And I can take the limit of this and take the limit of that separately because they're two separate fractions. I'm taking the limit separately. If I take the limit of, as h approaches zero of this fraction, I could see that is really just f prime of x. This is f prime of x. And if I take the limit as h approaches zero of this fraction, it's the same definition except with g, right? It's, um, this is the function as it's, or the definition of derivative as it's written for f, but this is the same uh, definition for derivative except we're looking at it in terms of g. So it's still g prime of x. And there you have it. So if I really want to take the derivative of a sum it's equal to the sum of the derivatives. And that's what we see here. That's all there is to it. Please like the video. I would appreciate it if you did that. And consider 
uh, subscribing to the channel. Go back to mathguide.com, check out our lessons, check out our interactive quizzes and instructional videos. Take care. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah.